today on this episode of the Cat's Eye News, there'll be a Detroit sports update, get to know your staff, and book club. On Monday, Nova Boys Varsity Soccer had their district semifinal match against Catholic Central where unfortunately their season came to an end. Shout out to the boys soccer program for having a great season. And prayers up for Luke Jodic who was injured during our match on Monday. We love you Luke. And on Tuesday, your Nova Varsity Volleyball team took on Kitten at Kitten where they won 3-0. Hey Wildcats, on Thursday, October 24th, Culture Club will be having a meeting at 2.50 p.m. in room 182. They will be learning about Italian culture and tiramisu will be provided. Have a great day, Wildcats. Hey Wildcats, Book Club will have a meeting on Friday, October 18th at 2.50. They'll be going over a book called Legend Horn by Tracy Dion. Come check it out. That's all. What up, Wildcats? Classical Music Group has their next meeting on the 16th of October in room 142, which is the orchestra room. Make sure to show up for a listening party and free hot cocoa. What's up, Novi? Come to Psych Club on October 16th after school at 3 p.m. to play Mafia and get free pizza. Hey, Novi Animation Interest Club will be meeting tomorrow on Thursday, October 17th. Hope to see you there. Hey, Wildcats. It's the Black Student Alliance and the Hispanic Latino Heritage Group. They're teaming together to watch Coco. So if you want to eat some popcorn, have some snacks, talk to friends, come join us on October 17th, which is a Thursday, at 3 o'clock in room 255. Hello, this is Neil. Novi Choir's first concert of the year is next Tuesday, October 22nd. The Fall Choir concert will be in the auditorium at 7 p.m. with performances from Novi Concert Choir, Novi Chorale, Bella Voce, Novi Singers, and our a cappella group, Major Six. This is going to be a night to remember. Here's a sneak peek into some of our songs. Next week, Tuesday, October 22nd, 7 p.m. in the auditorium. It's free, so come listen to some good music. Good day. We're here at FANAC for the Manufacturing Day field trip. We got a tour of the facility, and here's what we saw. It doesn't conform. So quality inspection, make sure that it was, it was manufactured properly. If it's not, it could go to a rework area and get, get that fixed. We got to see the different types of robots they make and how they work. A link. We, we also call it the Enkotsu robot, which is a Japanese word for fist or hand because it has a similar dexterity to the human hand. Hi, my name is Denise Gant, part of the human resources team. Um, so I'm responsible for many of our early career development programs, our apprenticeships, internships, co-ops. Primarily. Uh, could you elaborate more on the uh, opportunities you have for school students, for apprenticeships and internships? Sure. Um, the apprenticeship program is specifically for robotic technicians. It's a two-year training program. Um, you have to have just a high school education and at least be 18 for that. Um, and then our internship programs are geared towards the four-year degree programs. 
So you do have to be at least a sophomore um, to be eligible for those programs. And uh, lastly, what's your most fun part of the job working at FANEC? Um, good question. Um, I love working with the students. Um, yeah, it's, it's great working with young minds, very open to learning new things. So yeah, I would say that's probably my favorite. All right, thank you. <laughs> We're using a camera to find these EpiPens as though they were coming out of like an injection gold machine. My name is Joe Baldiga. So I'm the National Education Program Manager. So I work with high schools, community colleges, and universities to integrate uh, automated equipment. So robotics, CNC machines, and that type of technology into schools so students can go out and get good jobs in manufacturing. All right, and can you just briefly explain what Manufacturing Day is? So Manufacturing Day is like my favorite day of the year. So it's an opportunity for students to go to different manufacturers and, and see how it's made. So there used to be a TV show called How It's Made on TV. And basically this is like the, the open tour live version of that. So students can come in, get an opportunity to tour these different facilities and see what it's all, all about. I jokingly let talk about like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, that movie where like Charlie got the golden ticket and got to go see how the chocolate was made. Well, this is that opportunity for students to see how everything gets made. So cars, uh, from cars to uh, basically everything is manufactured. There's nothing that isn't somehow touched by manufacturing that we interact with in our day-to-day -day life. All right, so uh, what do you think is like the most uh, fun thing to do here? Fun thing to do, um, I, I've been here for 23 years and every day I'm blown away by the technology. So the creativity of people being able to use their brains and, and technology together to solve different problems. That's what I think is awesome. We ended the day by having a quick training session to learn how to move, program, and use these smaller robots. Uh, my name is Julian. Uh, my name is Chris. Brian. And how was your experience for the manufacturing day today? Oh, I thought it was really fun, really cool to see all the different robots and how they work with each other to like form all the products that the companies use. Um, I liked it a lot. It was very insightful and in, like the what Fanuc does as a business and like how much of an impact they have in manufacturing. And what was your most in interesting part about the the company or the things you learned there? I mean, I really like the part where they were lifting up the one-ton uh, battery for electric vehicles. I thought that was pretty cool because it's just such a massive battery that weighs so much and they're just moving around with such ease. Um, I really liked using, like tinkering with the robot when we were taught how to use the robot and like stacking, I stacked like four cylinders which is really cool. Um, I find all like the type of robots they make like so many uh, varieties of robots that they make and there was this really cool one it was like a big one and it was carrying a whole Corvette so I think that was and what would you rate your experience for the manufacturing day trip I'd say a 9 out of 10 it was really fun I think I learned a lot and it was a really enjoyable experience I'd give it a 10 it was really fun uh, I think I'd give it a 9 I really enjoy like the training part where we got to you know do our own robots and we could control it that's it for now. See you next time, Wildcats. Hello, this is Neil. I'm here with another CEN NFL Predictions versus Reality. For Jimmy, Ryusei, and Matthew, let's see how last week turned out. The Ravens won 30-23 against the Commanders. That's one point each to everyone. The Packers won 34-13 against the Cardinals. That's a point to Ryusei and Matthew. The Chargers won 23-16 against the Broncos. That's a point to Jimmy and Ryusei. The Steelers won 32-13 against the Raiders. That's another point to Jimmy and Ryuse. The Lions won 47-9 against the Cowboys. What else would you expect from Dallas, a place best known for the AT&T Stadium? I'm happy to say that's another point each to everyone. The Bills won 23-20 against the Jets. That's a point to Jimmy and Matthew. In the end, we have Matthew on 4 points, but Jimmy and Ryuse both win with 5 points each. I'll see you next week with the usual predictions versus reality, plus overall season scores for these three. Good day. Vanessa and I'm here with Mr. Erskine. What do you teach here at Novi? I teach art. And what's an unpopular opinion you have? My unpopular opinion is that it should not be called soccer. We should call it football because it came before American football. Agreed.
Hey Novi, welcome back to Detroit Sports Update. The Detroit Lions crushed the Dallas Cowboys 47-9. Defense really stepped up this game with allowing zero touchdowns and Brian Branch with an amazing game with two interceptions and a forced fumble. I say the only reason why this wasn't a 47-0 game is because the Dallas Cowboys' only star is their kicker, Brandon Aubrey. Unfortunately, during this game in the third quarter, Aiden Hutchinson fractured his tibia and is out for the season. And I hope for a very speedy recovery so he can come back for the playoff run. Last week, the Tigers lost both of their last two games against the Guardians, ending with 5-4 and 7-3. Uh, this ended the Tigers' season and their playoff run. The Tigers had an amazing second-half per season performance to get into the playoffs. They had a 0.2% chance of going into the playoffs in, the, in August, and then they were able to win a series in the playoffs. This young team has a very bright future, and I'm very excited for next year. The NHL season has finally kicked off, and the Red Wings played two games last week. On Thursday, October 10th, they went against Pittsburgh, Penguins and lost 6-3, but on Saturday, October 12th, the Red Wings won against the Nashville Predators. And on October, on Saturday, October 12th, the Red Wings won against the Nashville Predators 3-0. On Monday this week, the Red Wings also went against the New York Rangers again and lost 4-1. Their record right now is 1-3. They'll be going against the New York Rangers again on October 17th and the Nashville Predators on October 19th. U of M and MSU football had a break and are going to be playing on Saturday, October 19th as ranked 24 U of M go against ranked 23 Illinois and unranked MSU is going against unranked Iowa that dominated Washington last week. Stay tuned for Friday for NFL Sunday prediction. What's up, Wildcats? Do you want your story featured on the Cat's Eye News? Email us at nhscatseyenews at gmail.com. She gets a 10 meter head start. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cat's Eye News. If you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe with all notifications.